I'm senior web engineer from TenUp, and uh, today I would like to talk about automated testing of WordPress projects. Uh, before I start, I would like to say that uh, it's quite a big topic for one conference, so I will skip some details to not uh, say too much and give you too much information. So if you find something uh, you want to know more, uh, come after my talk and I will explain you better. So, <clears throat> I think everybody here knows that any change made to large and uh, complex code base requires uh, uh, testing to, to ensure that we uh, not introduce any new bugs in our system. Doing all testing manually each time we change something requires significant amount of time and uh, energy and not always can guarantee that we uh, found, find all bugs. <clears throat> so that's why we need to automate our testing so we can easily check everything each time we change something. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> okay, today uh, we have uh, three types of testing uh, used in web development. Uh, <coughs> The first type is acceptance testing. Second type is functional testing, also known as integrational testing. And uh, the third type is uh, most known unit testing. Uh, if we talk uh, a, bit, a little bit more... Oops, sorry. I have troubles me. Okay. Uh, if we talk a bit more about unit testing, uh, this uh, testing level is intended to test all uh, sm the smallest units of our application, like functions and classes. And uh, the purpose of this testing level is to uh, figure out if all our units work as we expect. Talking about WordPress, uh, we need to test on this level uh, all functions and class methods which we have in our application. Uh, and especially we need to pay attention and to try to execute these tests in isolations and uh, write tests for one behavior. Second type of testing is functional testing. Uh, on this level, we combine our smallest unit into modules and uh, test uh, how this modules works together. The purpose of this level is uh, to figure out uh, if our modules plugins uh, have compatibility issues between each other and if uh, <coughs> they work correctly or not. Once again, in WordPress reality, we check if modul modules work together, if plugins work correctly, if uh, we have any compatibility issue between themes and plugins, etc. Et uh, the, the final level is uh, acceptance testing. This uh, testing level is uh, intended uh, to test the system as a whole. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> we need to check if our system is uh, uh, compliance with business requirements. So it means that we need to check our site without understanding uh, what plugins we use, what theme we use, how it's built. All what, well, all what we need to check is how it works in user's browser to make sure that user can come to our site and do what he needs to do <coughs> and be happy. Okay, uh, what uh, we have today <coughs> and how we can uh, create our tests. Uh, today we have a lot of different frameworks <coughs> for testing, but <coughs> the most known is uh, PHP unit. It's a good framework and uh, oriented for unit testing, but unfortunately it's a bit hard and 
maybe, maybe almost impossible to write uh, acceptance tests and functional tests uh, just uh, with PHP unit. So a new framework has been developed over PHP unit, which, which is called Codeception. It's a PHP in the best framework. Uh, it extends it beyond just unit testing and gives us quite flexible tool, uh, tools to write uh, functional and acceptance tests. As you can see, it has a lot of different modules which you can use in your tests. And uh, all, all of them uh, gives you different uh, abilities to check, for example, database, file system, REST uh, API, XML, uh, XML RPC calls, etc. But unfortunately, it doesn't have WordPress module which will help you to write your tests for WordPress projects. That's why we decided to create uh, a WordPress plugin which will integrate Codeception into WordPress. We called it uh, WP Codeception. It's a WordPress plugin which integrates Codeception into WordPress and allows you to use WPCLI command, commands <coughs> uh, to create and run tests. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. So, as I said, it uses WPCLI command, <coughs> commands, and let's check uh, the basic commands which we have. To create uh, testing environments in our projects, we need to run WP Codeception Bootstrap command. It will create uh, in your project uh, global config, and uh, by default, it will create three suits, uh, each suit for each testing level. So you will have uh, unit suit, functional suit, and acceptance suit in your uh, folder. Uh, to create <coughs> uh, to create uh, tests, you can use one of these four commands. I, I don't want to go into details and explain the difference between them. You can check it on in the documentation. It's uh, it's slight uh, difference. So let's go to the next command. It's uh, conception run. It will run uh, all tests which you have in your projects. You can specify which suite you want to run and uh, what test you want to run. You can also define different environments <coughs> and run uh, your test in different environments. Uh, that's all about theory. Uh, let's take a look at a bit at the demo. It will explain you how you can you can use your uh, you can use uh, Codeception. So here we have just simply basic uh, WordPress uh, installation with uh, WooCommerce and uh, my style uh, theme from WooCommerce, from themes, sorry. Uh, let's assume we have uh, a site uh, which we built for our customer and customer wants us to, to, to check each time when we uh, develop a new feature that everything works and uh, cust uh, users can go to his site and uh, purchase products. Uh, let me open as an example. So here is just really basic tight site with uh, default uh, products. So what we're gonna do, we need to run terminal Okay, I will make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Let's assume we have uh, a folder called my plugin. And uh, let's assume we do everything here. It's hard to read. <coughs> so to create a new uh, testing environment here, we just need to call WP Codeception Bootstrap. It will create uh, all required configuration files and uh, 
if it open it here, it will create a folder with tests. And uh, here we have uh, acceptance suite, functional suite, and unit suite. So let's uh, create one suite for, sorry, one test for acceptance suite. To do, we need to run w code exception, generate, test. Acceptance, my test. It creates uh, a new file in acceptance folder, which we can open and uh, start writing tests here. Each public uh, function which has, uh, which it doesn't start from underscore will, will be considered as a test and uh, will be executed. So <coughs> before we start uh, writing the first test, let's uh, create a scenario for our test. Uh, let's try to automate checking if users can purchase uh, products in our e-commerce shop. To do it, we need to go to the shop. Let's do something like first step, go to the shop. The second step, um, select premium quality product. Uh, here, we will change the quantity and let's uh, grab uh, price to check in, check total in the future. So, third step is grab the price and change quantity, add to cart, and uh, go to cart. <clears throat> After going to the cart, we will let me clear it. We will uh, check the total price on the first step. And uh, proceed to check out. So on the checkout step, we need to fill in billing form. and proceed to PayPal. Okay, on PayPal we need to check if we can pay with PayPal account. And uh, login and pay. And finally, we need to check check if if uh, we purchase a product. So um, it will look like this. We click login. and uh, click pay now. After that, we will be redirected to thank you page. We will click click here link, and we will check if we see order received, which, will, which we assume that we purchased something. So as you can see, this, this is not a quite huge scenario, but it, it will take a lot of time if we will do it each time manually. So, <coughs> Before we start, we need to adjust our configuration for acceptance suite. As you can see here, we will use WebDriver module, which will allow us to send uh, commands to our browser and manipulate it. Uh, but uh, by default, we will we use uh, Phantom GS browser, which is uh, good, but uh, I will change it on Firefox. Firefox. And set Windows window size, maximize. Okay, <coughs> so let's start. Uh, I actually uh, forgot to say that each uh, 
test methods receives uh, acceptance tester uh, objects, which has a lot of uh, fun uh, helper functions, which will help us to to test our site. So if you can, if you take a look here, you can see that we have a lot of different uh, uh, methods. Like I am on a page, I am going to do something. I can see, I can't see. I <coughs> I feel field. I select option. I can see link. I wait for Ajax response, etc. It has a huge amount of different helpers. So how we will do it? Okay. Uh, from the beginning, we need to go to the home page. So I say I am on page on the home page. And uh, I want to select, uh, not select, by, but click on shop link in the navigation menu. So I say I click and pass <laughs> as first parameter, I pass a selector. In our case, it will be just shop text. But as a second parameter, I will uh, tell uh, context of this selection. And context will be just our navigation menu. If we go here, we can see that navigation has ID navigation. So I just pass ID selector here. And, uh, <coughs> and conception will determine that we need to click shop in navigation. So after clicking on shop, we will see this page. And let's assume I want to, I want to click on premium quality uh, product. So I want to say I see uh, premium quality in the in the products list. So I say context is products list. <coughs> After clicking on it, I want to see the title of the product. Oh, okay, sorry. We need to click on it to go to the product. Actually, we will use the same here. So now we need to check if we see premium quality title. I see premium quality title in in the product title header one. So uh, now we need to grab our price. So we have it here. So we need to say, okay, price, I grab text from price amount. And my, now I need to convert it to, to float variable. So I need to remove uh, dollar sign and uh, uh, so, to do it, I need to convert it to float val value and uh, perk replace perk replace everything what is not numeric or dot. So now we have price. Uh, now we have we need uh, to change quantity. Let's uh, use something like randomize f random from one to ten. <coughs> to, to change quantity, we will use i fill field methods. The first parameter is uh, selector for this field, so we can so we can say something like uh, quantity input text quantity input text and pass quantity. 
uh, after that we want to say i click on add to cart button and <coughs> i see something like has been added to your cart in the context of uh, in the context of WooCommerce message. And finally, uh, we need to click on the view cart button to go to the cart. Click view cart button from uppercase. That's all. <clears throat> now, we, uh, now we need to check the total price. So we have our cart, and we want to check that the total is equal to our quality and the price. Sorry, our, our quantity. So <coughs> we need to say I see okay. <laughs> I see dollar sign number format quantity and price, two digits in the in the order total row. And uh, after that, if everything is okay, we need to proceed to check out. So here we need to fill in all required fields. So uh, when we call when we call I fill field method, so we can pass as the first parameter uh, field label. So I can say I fill field first name and say Eugene. I fill field second name as Manuilov. What else? Uh, I need to provide email address. Uh, it is uh, and I need to provide phone number. Uh, then I need to select country, select option, uh, country, let me be Ukraine. Uh, now I need to fill field and set town and city. Uh, now state country and postcode zip. State country. Uh, let it be something like this. Okay, and finally we need to click uh, proceed. Oh, sorry. to check out. Okay, <coughs> it should be uh, it should be something like 
click proceed to PayPal. Okay, here we can uh, try to run our test and see how it goes. So if we open here, we can say, okay, code exception. Run acceptance and show me steps. Sorry. Again, we started uh, our code exception. It should launch Firefox now. Okay, so we made uh, a mistake in selector because it's not second name, it's last name. Okay, if something wrong goes with your tests, uh, Codeception will create uh, a screenshot of that page and you can see what happens when test fails. So we can see that I, I entered wrong selector, it's last name. Actually, one more time. Yeah, proceed to PayPal button. Okay, let's try one more time. <clears throat> okay, and this time, something wrong with postcode. Postcode zip. Okay, zip should be uppercased. And the final one. Okay, as you can see, our test run successfully. But now we need to go to the PayPal and, uh, and to pay for it. <coughs> <coughs> so the problem with PayPal is that uh, it uses uh, Ajax, Ajax requests. And uh, to simplify our tests, I will wait a few seconds to make sure that all AJAX requests have been processed. So I just say, I want to wait five seconds. Uh, and I need, after that, I expect to see this page, but I also need to make sure that I want to pay with my PayPal account. So <coughs> I need to click on this link and wait a bit to make sure that PayPal uh, switched to PayPal account. After that, I need to enter email and PayPal password. So I say I fill field email with my sandbox account. Fill field PayPal password is something like this. And I need to check option which says this is a private computer. <coughs> After that, I need to wait a few seconds. and click on pay, but pay now button.
after that, we will have thank you page with uh, click here link. <coughs> And finally, we should be redirected to order received page, and uh, we want to make sure we have this header on the page. Okay, let's run it. As you can see, each time we have a different amount of uh, T-shirts which we want to buy, and uh, we have um, address. <coughs> I forgot about address, sorry, guys. <sighs> if I remember correctly, it was something like billing address. Let me correct this. So Forgot to click on login button. <clears throat> I hope this this is the last one. <clears throat> but you can see that if we spend one time ten minutes to write a test, it will run each time you change something. It will take fifteen seconds, and you will be sure that everything works fine for you. Okay, actually, the last one is uh, probably something wrong with selector. But <laughs> in general, you can see that we passed uh, all checks from the beginning till the end, and we check that all the process works correctly. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> this, 
this is this is the only one scenario which we can where we can use our conception. Uh, we have a lot of different cases when it could be used. And uh, for example, if you have large project and you use, for example, staging server, you can run all tests uh, on staging server uh, each time a new version appears. And you can run it uh, in CLI without uh, any needs to install Firefox, etc. Also, what we have is um, <coughs> a module for browser stack. I'm not sure if everybody knows about it, but browser stack uh, provides us ability to use automated testing using, the, uh, using uh, its uh, service. So what we have, we can run our tests using browser stack uh, on uh, quite range of devices. For example, we can run all our tests on mobile devices. We can select, okay, I want to run it on uh, uh, iOS. I want to, to have uh, iPhone 5S and I want to have their, for example, Chrome browser. And it will run. Or, for example, you want to run uh, your test in uh, Windows and XP and uh, have Internet Explorer 6 or something like this. So let me show you a quick example of it. So actually, let's do not close it. You just do something like this. We will create a separate test for it. Uh, we will go call it test browser stack. So uh, to use browser stack, we need to change our configuration. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it. I will copy our already prepared configuration for it. As you can see, <coughs> I have defined another environment for staging server, which uses browser stack module and uh, configures it to use Windows uh, 7 version and uh, Internet Explorer 10. And the uh, URL will be pariswordcam.org. So what we will check, let's uh, see what else can we check here. So. <coughs> Uh, let's check uh, if uh, if our site responsive and if uh, menu for mobile phone will be different uh, than for desktop site. So, for example, if it grabs this button, so I can say I. I am on. I am on. I'm on home page. And I see this text in the primary sorry, is in the primary navigation context. And I don't see this button. <coughs> I don't see menu toggle. Oh, sorry, not menu toggle. I don't see this text. So I don't see this text in the same context. So now I want to change the size of our windows for example, to the mobile size. I say I resize windows to this dimension. And now I want to see mobile version and don't see desktop, desktop version. 
So I say item C it and C the second one. So it's really simple, just as an example, because I don't have too much time. Uh, and we will run it on browser stack. So to do it, we need to say codeception, run acceptance, show me steps, and use environment staging. Now we go to the browser stack and I'll run our test. So we started. Um, browser stack st started a new instance. Launch Windows 7. Come on. Actually, it works faster, just uh, internet connection slow for some reason here. Okay, time out. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I can't show you it right now because the uh, internet connection is slow and we can't demonstrate it. But uh, in general, we can just run any operating system and any browser we want and check in different browsers the same site and to make sure that everything works in different browsers if we need to support something old and crappy. <clears throat> uh, that's probably all for, for me today. It's just an introduction into automated testing and uh, it, I tried to show you what you can do and how it could be easily when you create small tests it, and it will save you a lot of time each day. Uh, okay, back to my presentation. And thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks, Eugene. Uh, I have a question for you. Okay. How about uh, dynamic content like Ajax? Or for example, uh, instead of um, use PayPal, I use Stripe. And I, when I click on the process to check out, I have the Stripe pop-up. Yeah, uh, you can use uh, different methods. Like, for example, if you take a look here. Okay. We can say, I wait for JavaScript. So you can uh, check uh, if uh, jQuery has uh, active connection, active Ajax connection, uh, then it fails, or wait while we finish all connections like this. So it's, it's, it, could be done. it could be done. Actually, <coughs> uh, wait. Mm. For JavaScript, for text. Yeah, we just can wait for JavaScript to be executed. Thank you. A question? Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, I have two questions. The first one, is your project uh, free? Yeah, it's free. You can, uh, we actually don't have uh, a code exception project. We have a WP, WP Codeception plugin. It's free, it's on uh, GitHub, and you can grab and use it. Okay. The second question uh, Is your project working only with uh, WordPress or uh, with any other uh, web application? Uh, Codeception works with uh, any PHP application. It has a lot of different modules for different uh, modern uh, PHP frameworks like Symfony. Uh, Laravel, etc. Native application, PHP yeah, application. Yeah, even even uh, native PHP application will, will be will work uh, fine with uh, Codeception. Uh, WP Codeception is just a plugin for WordPress to help uh, WordPress developers use Codeception in uh, 
our projects. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for the presentation. I'm uh, more of a project manager, so I have a, a more global question. Uh, what kind of workload would you say this adds up to a project as compared to the usual development? How, do you th how long do you think the test would be <coughs> sorry, taking to create a write? Uh, it depends. It depends on what you want to test and how complex is it. Because uh, um, if it's just simple front end, it's it won't be too hard to write a test for it. If you want to test something in the admin side, <coughs> it will be more harder, and it might take a little bit more time. But uh, I would say <coughs> maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, but in future, it will save you a lot more. Sure, thank you. Uh, the other part is, uh, who do you think should be in charge of this? Is it better to have the uh, developer who did this section write his own test uh, and run them, or is it better to have a new pair of eyes and someone outside of that who does the test? Uh, once again, it depends on the project, type of project, if, uh, and the resources which uh, this project has. Because uh, in general, I think it's more proper if uh, developers write their own tests when they develop something. Uh, it's, my, it's my opinion, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in your code, do you have some tests to test speeds or several latency or response in generating pages? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, test uh, speed and performance is a bit different uh, testing level. It's like system testing or something like this. And it, it is more related to DevOps uh, guys rather than PHP guys. So, so you, you, you can try to, to generate a page um, for uh, two seconds or five seconds, it depends. It's, uh, it's not including your taste. Uh, do you mean, <coughs> actually maybe I misunderstand your question. Uh, do you mean uh, you want to test the performance or what? Uh, just testing um, page generating. For example, in your, um, in your projects, uh, you, you, you have your page generating in a few seconds. For example, after upgraded WordPress uh, in an, ah, a see. newer version, um, pages are generating in 10 seconds. Do you, yeah, you, you test it? <coughs> you, can, you, can add, uh, you can extend your tests to check uh, how quickly you uh, go from one page to another page and compare probably to some... Mm, some value which you expect is fine for you. Thank you for the, for the presentation. I want to know if there is any code hint extension for other code editor. Uh, sorry? Uh, I see that you use an IDA. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh, yeah. For instance, for brackets, is there is any um, extension for code hint for comp code completion? Code completion. Uh, I think all modern uh, IDE uh, has code completion and can uh, <coughs> can understand what uh, you have based on your. For example, if you take a look here, I have WP codeception folder. It's a plugin uh, which we use, and uh, <coughs> I installed it and uh, activated it in my WordPress admin panel. And uh, my ID uh, understand what files and classes and functions exist there and uh, just use it for completion. So if you use something like PHP Storm or anything else what uh, has code completion, it will also understand it and will uh, help you when you write your tests. Okay. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the presentation, it's very good. I have a question. I understand you have a script for testing a module, and then you have scripts for testing the device, the interface, and, but how many scripts do you need to test one module? Because you've done just one script. So what is the average number of scripts that your developers have to 
designed to have a full test of the script, making sure that, well, you can buy a T-shirt, but you can say, well, I'm wrong, and I go back. Yeah, once again, it all uh, depends on the project, on uh, your resources, on your deadline, on how many developers you have, and how deeply you want to test your projects. Probably something could be <coughs> sacrificed to make uh, the project faster. And uh, probably, <coughs> for example, for acceptance tests, we can just uh, test the main features if we want to make it, uh, if we want to develop uh, the project uh, sooner. So it's all depends on situation and on projects and what plans we have and what resources we have. But in general, it will be enough if you test the main features which uh, you need. Another question? Don't be shy. Hello, um, Philip. Um, I have a question on, on how we can, how can we improve uh, the recording of a um, uh, test scenario? Uh, would it be possible, for instance, to, uh, to use the Chrome developer tools and the network tab, you know, you can um, just check a, a checkbox and preserve log and you can get, uh, the result is a, a .har uh, uh, which is basically um, a recording of what you just do at the uh, traffic level under Chrome. Uh, would it be possible to, to get this log to um, import a script? Like in, uh, uh, well, the use case, um, you can do this uh, in Gatling, which is a, a stress tool, and I don't know if you know it. Uh, yeah, it's a good question, and to be honest, uh, I haven't faced with such uh, requirements and um, not sure at the moment if it's possible to do or not. But thank you for, for your question and sorry. Question? So we can congrats, Eugene. Thank you.